Hello, beautiful fish people. It's Lord Magicus. It's another merfolk weekend kind of time. Yeah. Uh, this is, it's been a bit awkward trying to find time to do these, but I don't want to leave everyone hanging. So it's going to be rough for the next like few weeks, I'm sure, but trying to find time to make sure we get some streams in. So here we are. We find ourselves again. Uh, it, it'll get better as we get deeper towards sp spring, but, uh, this is, this is just the ridiculously busy time of year for me, so my time is more limited, and I am more stressed in general, so it's, you know, it, it, this requires concentration that I don't always have, but it's okay, we're here, we're gonna do this anyway, because the people demand it, so it's, uh, merfolk. It's very similar to the list we ran last week, and the only change I'm really making here is I removed an island to play a Manamo. I don't, I don't think that there's a huge difference either way, whether you include it or not, but sure, why not? We can do it. This list performed great last time, so I don't see any reason not to just run it back. Uh, the only card I was thinking about changing was the Mana Leak, because I kind of wanted a third copy, but I don't really know what I would cut for it. Oh, so maybe we'll get a better idea this time. Overall, I'd say this list did really well last time, so I don't want to mess with it too much. Uh, we just need to jam it again and see um, how it performs again. So that's pretty much it. Uh, doo -doo -doo. There we go. We'll bring up the chat. There. Um, oh yeah, stream elements is actually a thing. Good job, bot. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I don't really have a whole lot to say about it. I already said everything last time when we ran 5-0 with this list, so it's clearly there's something to it. Uh, I enjoy the Harbingers. I don't really miss Silvergill Adept at all. And I know there's a few newer kind of decks that I haven't really got to play a lot against. I know, like, 8 Blast is one of them that popped up, and I think that was, like, another, like, Aspiring Spike Brew, but... You know that's that's just gonna happen. So we'll we'll see how we are against that. Um, Chalice is actually pretty good against that list, so hopefully that will be helpful if we run into it. But other than that, like yeah, we should be okay. So all right, we're not gonna waste any time here. We're just gonna go and hop into our league. There we go. Let's get this done. <laughs> People demand content. Oh, yeah. yeah you want to see what I picked up here while we're waiting? Oh, oh God. Yeah, these might not show up very well because of the... Yeah, but it's fine. Uh, I bought copies of Thought Lash. But I forgot that there's, like, green on these cards, so you're not going to, like, see everything, but... <laughs> yeah, they just showed up here yesterday. I don't know if I'm going to end up playing that deck in Legacy or not, but it's better to have them regardless for the collection, so. Alright. We are on the draw versus Bacon Dude. This hand is not very impressive. They mold a 6... That we can't use the force. Like, this is pretty bad. This is a lot better. We're going to keep this. Um, let's see here. Probably just put a land on the bottom. They mold a five? Okay. I think this is fine. <clears throat> mold a four? What the hell is going on here? Do they have a companion? They do, Gigantha. So this might be Tron, which means uh, if it's Tron, then this Tide Shaper has just ensured our victory. Yes. Okay. All right. Um. Sure. We're definitely just going to use Tide Shaper to seize this land.
Guessing they're going to go Ancient Stirrings here. Contra's here for the 5-0. Always. Alright, how lucky is this Tron player? Are they going to find another Tron land? They might have just had to keep, like, Tron land spear and just pray. They found forest? Oh, that is bad news for them. Okay. Fuck. Alright, uh, well, let's... Alright, they are... So we do have to Tide Shaper it's a, a land here. Uh, let's use Cavern of Souls. Let's take out this power plant. And probably just play Spaloon and hope that we can find, like, Force or something. Oh, they, oh god, no, they're going to have Tron in line next turn. Maybe another Tide Shaper would be nice. Oof. Okay. Um. We could be in trouble here. There's a very high chance they're just going to play like Ugin. I don't have a good way to defeat that because they just nat. They found natural Tron. They didn't even need the stirring sport. So they have forest in hand. They're going to crack this to get power plant. And then, yeah, fuck. All right. Tron is the best deck to play if you're really lucky. <laughs> All right. That's fine. Uh, and that was after what? They mulled a four? Fuck. Yeah, they did. All right. Um, I guess we're just playing Svaloon. I don't really have a better plan. So if they have it, they have it. And like... Alright, attack. I mean, we have like a really good sideboard plan for this, so... This member just happens to be really poor against what they're doing, so... Don't know about all them Pokemon cards. Yeah, well, this isn't quite Pokemon. What's going to happen is they're probably going to play Ugin. Or maybe they it's possible they don't have a threat. But no, they, they have Karn, it looks like. Okay. Karn Liberated might just have to get rid of Spaloon here. So it's, honestly, that's not the worst that could have happened here. A lord kills Karn, so we're not out of this. Fuck, of course not. Um, I think that I'm supposed to just play Svaloon. Going on dark, Yanti. I'm teaching your nephews Pokemon cards. Yeah. Though that's how you get them started on TCGs. That was how I got started. <laughs> okay, let me think here. I mean, we have tons of stuff to throw away to Karn ticking up. Um, if we attack Karn, we force them to plus it. So it'll go to 1, and then it'll be at 5. Which is, we sh should be able to kill it then. Assuming they don't have anything else. I can just exile an ether vial. And then maybe we can draw like Tide Shaper next turn. And they just don't have anything. Forest. They just put Gigantha in hand. Oh, okay, that works. So what do I want? I need like Trickster or I need a Lord. Oh, fuck, that is so bad. Um, no, it's not. I have Dismember. What am I talking about? Duh. Okay.
No, we had we had a plan. Okay, that's helpful. But they do have a bajillion mana, so the only reason we're not playing this right now is because there's not a good reason to. Sure, they have uh, even more of a bajillion mana. We just need to find like another Tide Shaper, and then we have them kind of back up. Uh, Blast Zone is terrible for us. Okay. <clears throat> Well, we have a 1, a 2, and a 3, so there is that. God, these vi That is our third Aether Vial here. That is so bad. It might blow up the Tide Shaper. I think that's what's happening. Hopefully we can draw another one. Default's not terrible. Um, I guess we just need them not to draw anything bad, that's all. That's kind of bad. Well, they can't actually kill Svaloon with it. I have Mutavault, so... No, it's easy to get addicted to Pokemon, right? Look, that, that game is really good, actually. And uh, they... I think they pay way better attention to, like... The distribution and... Um, meta for their game than Magic does, so... Or at least for the last few years they have been. And I'm pretty sure the Pokemon products all come with, like, online codes for everything, so. So the Hexcatcher's gonna die here. Um, this is not going to kill Svaloon. Okay, you kill off the hex catcher, but if they just don't draw anything for like one more turn, then we can actually like win here, so There's no value to playing the Aether Pile at this point. They are either going to find, like, Ugin, or they're going to basically just die. Okay, Sylvan Scrying is not that scary, I think. I don't think that there's a land that they're going to find that's going to matter. They got Besage You who endures all. Okay, they're going to kill the Mutavault, I see. But they don't have mana for it. I don't see how that's going to work. I'm not going to forget to attack, so they don't have green mana for this Besaju.
They're going to make a 1-1 one, one token. Okay. They're dead. Fuck. That was really scary. They had an incredible Moldafor that we were like really on the ropes there for a minute, but only had one car and to follow it up. And then once we took care of that, they just ran out of gas. So there we go. Tron is really a great matchup for us in general. We have a bajillion cards that can come in from the sideboard. Nope, not you. Get get the hell out of here. Uh, all right, we got to cut ten cards. So first of all, miscolor is not where we want to be. Dismember is not where we want to be, and Harbinger of the Tides is not it either. So we have twenty eight creatures still. That's fine. This this is perfect. The card from the newest set that's going for five hundred dollars. God damn. Well, that's uh. They're keeping seven cards. I feel like this doesn't actually do anything to them. I want a mulligan once at least. Uh, this is probably fine. Okay. A Dragonite deck. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Now you've got my heart. <laughs> I am a Dragonite fanatic. I have a I'm trying to collect a copy of every printing of Dragonite. So, oh, you better believe I'm gonna force the fuck out of this. Okay, no. If it's just a Chromatic Star, I don't care about that. Relic is pointless. It doesn't do anything. Subtlety. Okay, that seems pretty good. Um, I mean, I guess I have to play the master here. And then force pitch subtlety. Oh, they just had Natural Tron the whole time. All right. I think I'm going to keep this one in my hand because I might want to hard cast Force of Negation and keeping an extra blue card might be important here, so. I really want to get to the point where I can hard cast the subtlety. If their plan is to just play like another card, like, that's not going to go well for them, so. Alright, sure, star away. Stopping the mana is pretty pointless at this point. Yeah, fuck off with that. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> now, drawing a land here would be good because then I can just play subtlety for four. Beautiful. All right. Sure. Another sphere. That's fine. Okay. They just want to draw a card with Relic. That's fine. That means they're digging for some shit. It's okay with me. Here's f five mana. What are you doing with this?
Gigantha, and they're going to play Gigantha. Okay, so that probably means that they're out of gas. Sure, there's a map. I mean, map will probably just get Blast Zone if I had to take a guess. Manamo's not exactly the one I was hoping for here. Um, Alright, well. We just have to kill them quickly. So there's 10 coming in. Uh, I guess... Is there any reason for me to hold on to this? No. They gotta find something right now or they're dead, so let's see what they got. Like, Karn is not good enough. Uh, Ugin would definitely help them. Worm Coil? Yeah, that might be enough. Unless I find Trickster or an Island Walk creature. They don't have a lot, so it's close. This maybe buys them a turn. I mean, okay, I think that should work. We will island walk our way to victory here. We will just hit the Urza's Tower. Turn off Tron here. That's fine. Sure, they're going to crack map, but is that actually going to help you? Oh, they're going to... Okay, I see. They can besage you their own uh, tower. So, you know what? Maybe... No, because... Uh, no, they still would have been able to do this and do it in response. So, this doesn't actually... What? Why? Why did you give up? I don't know. Maybe they just thought, like, it doesn't matter. It's too late. I think this, this plan would have worked. Like, they found besage you... So they could channel it and destroy their own tower. But I guess they realized it would have taken them off Tron. And maybe they just... Re like, they didn't have a good way to stop Subtlety from killing them in two turns, so... Because what happens here... Like, if I animate Mutavault, they can block it. They would gain 6. Go to 12, and yeah, they... Uh, yeah, they, so I have to like, attack with only Subtlety here. But they would then be forced to burn Besage you on their own tower, so... I don't know. I mean, it's, it's not like it was a great chance for them to win, but... They could have played one more turn and saw what was going to happen. Who knows? Alright, there we go. We're, we are on the scoreboard here. Beating Tron. Tron is pretty great for us, usually, so... Despite their best efforts in Game 1, they really had a good chance, but... We managed to pull it out there. And then we were just nice and patient with our disruption in game two, even against their natural Tron, so. Cool. We are on the draw against GBS. Uh... This is really, like, not terribly impressive. They mold a six. I guess I'm going to keep it. If I, See, like, if I knew what deck I was at, like, this is a hand where I probably wouldn't keep this in game two, depending upon what deck I was up against. I think in the blind for game one, I probably have to. 
but it doesn't mean that it's good. And it's like, it's really close to that line of like, yeah, it's pretty unimpressive, but it has creatures and lands in it, so you can't be like super picky about it. This might be a spell, this game. Like we have three turns to draw a land and then this becomes a spell instead. I don't really want to draw more lands, though. Alright, well, they're having a very hard time deciding whether six cards is good enough. Yeah, the fact that they also mulligans, like, probably helps us a little bit. But there's still a lot of decks where it's like this hand is just going to roll over and die to a lot of stuff, so... Uh, it's, it's... it's not great. Dratini is a fan of you building the Dragonite deck, though, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I have about half of all the printings of all the cards. I'm collecting all the Dragonites that are for, like, first edition, normal printing, reverse hollows, and regular hollows for everything. Alright, well, we're just waiting for opponent to, like, put the cat out, because I guess the cat's on fire or something. <laughs> Who knows? Subscribed for another month, huh? That, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Okay, they are just, they mold to five, and then they're, they're like, all right, five is enough. What are we up against here? Grief, okay, uh, li this is living end. All right, you know what, then all of a sudden this, well, this hand doesn't really have a lot of disruption, but you know what, that's fine, because they're on living end, and we have lots of really good draws versus this deck. Like, they, at any given point, we just top deck Hex Catcher and they're in a bunch of uh, pain, so. Alright, take away Harbinger. Play that island for me, boy. <laughs> Gotta get that island walk in. Alright, uh, Dismember is terrible. Um, can't cast that yet. They have one land. Ooh, that is not going to go well for them. Okay. We're just playing Lord here. There's not, a, there is not a zero, like, there's, there's a possibility that I might dismember my own Lord at some point. If they don't draw another land, they're just fucked, so. It looks like they probably didn't. No, they did not. Oh, that is brutal. Okay. Um. So, how do we want to do this here? I guess I should probably put my foot on the gas as much as possible. Like, they can't even cycle anything. Like, yeah, they're so far away. I guess we're playing Lord here. It's like next turn we're just going to attack them for a bajillion. They're, they've got to be close to the point where they're just going to concede, so... Yeah, they just gave up. Okay. 
He's got that island, boy. Yeah, you're right. Uh, this is not quite a free match, but it's it's pretty close. Living End, I think, is one of our best matches in the format right now. And it's all because of this fucking Voldalian hex catcher. This uh, here, come over here, be the star for a minute. Yeah, our hex catcher. Um, get yeah, being able to counter Living End, uh, that's fantastic. So. Okay, what do we not want against them? Um, Dismember is terrible. Also, Harbinger is not terribly good either. I think everything else is fine. I definitely want to keep Mistcaller. Tide Chaper is a 1 mana 2-2, two, two, and it can fuck with their mana, so... Yeah, I, uh, Trickster is only okay, but... I don't think I don't really think Harbinger is the way to go here. Svaloon is fine. I don't think Svaloon is fantastic here, but we have so many cards it doesn't really matter. She'll be okay. She's a little bit slow versus this deck, but it's fine. Ah, oh, this mat this hand is absolutely great. Uh, we're gonna keep. We have something to do. So we have two really important cards for them to want to take away here. Uh, that's also really good. I find it hard to believe that they're going to get through all of this hate. They got a mystical dispute this, right? No. Okay, well, this by itself effectively just means that they're not using a living end on it. So I might just play like one Lord of Atlantis and the Mutavault, and I don't actually need to play the other one for a while. Is this first miss caller? Like they have to petty theft this or something, or otherwise, yeah, the they're, living end's not going to go off. Um. Yeah, I'm okay with this here. I might just hold this other Lord of Atlantis for Force of Negation. Yeah, they're... They're not getting these back, so... You gotta get the green for yeah, their their outburst and their shardless agent. They didn't have another land, so this hex catcher is also gonna be amazing. That's really good too. <clears throat> so let's see here. Um I think that I wanna play the Tide Shaper first. Take away their green mana. Because right now they can't outburst me, so. And then I still have Hexcatcher up at any given point. They could dispute this. I mean, that's fine. If they want to waste Mystical Dispute on Tide Shaper, I'm okay with that. Okay, I'm not going to pay for it. I wanted you not to have the fucking dispute up for force of negation. That was the real trick here. Um, it looks like they might be holding out for petty theft at this point. <clears throat> I 
Okay, cycle. That's not helping you. You're like still dead this turn. Green means they can't do this on my turn. Like, if they don't cast Shardless Agent right here, they're just, they've lost. Um... There we go. We win the match. They had nothing. Because the only way they can combo at instant speed, they have to have red mana for a violent outburst. Shardless Agent is sorcery, and they know that, like, as long as Mistcaller's here, like, if they try to do it, they're just going to lose all the creatures in their graveyard anyway, and we are only going to lose Mistcaller and Lord, which not a big deal. We'd also, at that point, yeah, we wouldn't get this back, but that's fine, because we'd still be able to then flash in Hexcatcher and then have Mutavault to attack with. And then also, even following up, like, we could play Lord of Atlantis and still keep up Force of Negation. So, like, we, we had everything we possibly needed there. All right, there we go. Uh, Tron into Living End is a very strong start to a league. Like, that's about as much as we can reasonably ask for. Two very good matches in a row. So, I would say against both of them, like, Harbinger of the Tides is pretty poor, but it's fine. Silvergill Adept is better against those decks, but I think the thing is, and I will continue to say this, I don't think we need Silvergill Adept. Like, against those matches, we're already doing really well. Like, Hexcatcher is just great against these kind of decks, and against stuff like Murktide, I think Harbinger is going to perform better. And against a lot of other stuff, I think the Harbinger is still going to be better, so. Uh, we're finally on the play here. This is a very risky hand. Um, sure, I'll keep it, though. We're on the play with Vile, so... We have very many two-drops, and even if we draw Mutavault, we can still cast Hexcatcher off of it. <clears throat> Swamp, okay. Drawing a land here would be ideal. Swamp Pass is usually good for us. Uh, it's not the best, but it's it, it could be worse. Because it means now if something bad happens to this vial, we have a backup one. So we'll still be able to get a game plan going. Alright, what are we doing with this swamp here? It's a very pretty swamp. This is the uh, secret lair one. Oh god, this is a scam. Is that what's happening? It looks like it. Okay. Which means they probably have like a bajillion removal spells in their hand, including Fury, so... We gotta be very careful. This thing also very likely is gonna have Undying. Alright. okay. We'll let it attack and then probably just bounce it with Harbinger. <clears throat> I think this is a match where Harbinger is okay. Silver Girl would still probably... I don't know. It, it's actually arguable because they have Fury, so it may not be better. They're both probably around equal. All right. We're going to see Season Pyromancer here. Sure. Um, I guess I'll just flash in Trickster here. Because I can tick this up to three. Put Spaloon in play, and then I can put in both Hex Catchers if I want, and it's going to really tax them a lot. They're tapped out. I may as well go on the offensive. That's pretty helpful, too. Okay, um...
We'll see if they want to like try anything here. Uh, no, it doesn't look like it. Uh, okay. So I don't need to play the hex catchers right now. Uh, I am gonna play the Spaloon though. Because at any point, if they try to go after it, then Hexcatcher can protect it, so. They just gave up. They were like, there's no fucking way we're beating Svaloon here. Okay, cool. Stole game one versus Scam. That's great. I don't remember exactly how we did this last time. Um... Well, I don't know if I have time to check. Alright, Mana Leak, uh, I think we did take in Spreading Seas here. Yeah, Subtlety definitely, for sure. Uh, Force of Negation, no. Uh, the Miscollard stays in. We did trim on Aether Vials. We took out two of those, I think we took out two Hex Catchers. And then two Tide Shapers. Yeah, okay, this is what we did last time, and this seemed to work out, so... I guess this is what we're going to do again this time. Okay. Uh, this is fine, I think. Probably. If we have an answer to them going like turn one Ragavan, so it's really the most we can reasonably hope for. Are they going to Thought Seize me? Okay. Probably should take like Svaloon. Honestly, the Dismember shouldn't be very scary to them. This is just to protect us from like the really degenerate turn one starts. We might be in a scenario where we want to... Uh, depends. Uh, they took Dismember. Okay, so they're looking to do degenerate things. Maybe that means they're going to dash Ragavan. Uh, this is not a terrible spot to play Mutavault, but I think I'm going to play the island. Because there's some chance we want to play Harbinger next turn. Means this might mean they're gonna like try to go for a grief and and then bring it back and try to take my whole hand or they could just dash Ragavan here. Which that looks like what's happening. So we need Ragavan to just have a miss. Well, they're not gonna find a whole lot with it, so yeah, they they can't play the Lord anyway. But they got the treasure token. That's what's really annoying. Um, I guess I'll play Mutavault. I don't think playing Harbinger here has a whole lot of value. I might dash Ragavan again. At which point I may just try to block it with Hexcatcher, but I expect that it will not. And the... yeah, they'll they get another treasure probably, so... The more scary thing is they'll probably be able to play whatever they find. So if they hit like a Spaloon, that's really bad. Now they're just actually playing it this time, okay. Well, 
Alright, well I gotta do something. I can't let that sit on an empty board. I mean, I assume that they'll probably like terminate it or something, but I have to get the spells out of their hand. <laughs> what are they doing? That's a really weird way to do this. There's a th very ex like weird three mana. Um, get rid of that. All right. So basically, we need them not to have fury. That's it. Okay. No, we're, uh, that might mean we're okay here. They could still have it though. They might find it off of pyro. You just card a ragavan and a bloodstain. Okay. But it means Ragavan can't attack and then finish the job off with removal. God damn it. Alright. Well, it costs them two cards to be able to do this, and they can't reanimate it right now, so... It's... It's not great. They pitched another Season Pyro to be able to do this, too, so... I'm not happy that that happened, but it could have been worse. They only have one card left, so, like, we're not far off from stabilizing here. Yeah, they exile an island, which is fine. Um, where are we at here with this? Probably at the phase where Harbinger is just going to bounce something and try to block. really need to play Master of the Pearl Trident yet, and then next turn I can play Mita Vault. This also makes it so that if I draw, like, two lords, I could potentially play Master plus, like, Lord of Atlantis or something. Well, they played a land, so that's probably good news. Uh, I'm going to bounce the Ragavan and attempt to block Pyro. Actually, you know what? No, I'll take the damage from Pyro. Fuck it. That's not scary. I don't want them... I don't want it in the graveyard right now. Two damage is not that bad. I just don't want Ragavan hitting me. Okay. Um, that could matter. I don't think I'm in an attacking mode just yet, but Mana Leak could do something here, so. I can actually animate Mutavault, block with it, and then still have Mana Leak up, so. They drew another land. They do nothing. Okay, that's got to be fine. That has also got to be fine for us. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, sure. They can get two tokens, but that also uses up the treasure token and keeps Mana Leak more alive, so a little bit of value with that. And we're still protected against Fury, I think. So. So. Like their attacks are not actually very good here. They just gave up and just gave us the match. They were like, 
There's a Spaloon here, and we have no fucking chance of defeating it. All right. Oh my God, the fucking. There, look, there, there's no chat, but uh, revealed the hand of two swamps. He's like, I give up, and you know, draw next card, draw next card, draw next card. That, uh, that is some some salt there. They realize Spaloon is about to turn the game around, and they don't really have anything they can do to fight it. Like. I, I don't know, it's such a weird spot to give up in, though, because, like, I don't know that you're not holding up a bunch of removal to try to blow me out. I mean, I, it's gonna be a number of turns before I can actually, like, legitimately threaten to kill you. I don't have Island Walk, like, these can chump walk for a little while. You've got time! <laughs> you didn't need to give up there, but, sure, you know what, we'll take it, fuck it. It's just... That, it, it tends to be usually a hard match, so the fact that he just gave up so easily is totally fine by me. I We are just going to play and take whatever victories we can get. So we had two good matches handed to us, and then like one that should have been hard, but ended up being pretty easy. So I think he should have stuck it out for at least a few more turns. Like There is significantly like good chances of him being able to turn it around. So, I don't know. That's just me. I I I wouldn't give up there. I don't think the game is over quite yet. It's like, I don't know, maybe he's only got like 30% odds, but you know what? That's that's different. I only give up in like single digits odds. <laughs> there we go. So, we've already made money in this league. That's a plus. Now, we get to continue going for the 5-0. All right, we are on the play. Against Enrique MTG. Uh, all right, sure. We worked out for us before. We have Vile and we have Dismember and Tide Shaper, so we've got plays to to, to do with our one mana. Hopefully, we can find our second land soon. <clears throat> Rift Bolt. Okay, so we're up against Burn. It looks like that's my read on this. Oh, uh, that's not great. Vile's probably getting ticked up to three. And I'm probably going to have to dismember anything that they play. So, not ideal, but... This looks like they could be holding up Boros Charm. I want them to play, like, Swift Spear, and then I can dismember it. Goblin Guide would be even better. Burn is a match we should be able to we should be able to win this one, so. Um I don't want to play the Tide Shaper just yet because that would give them something to actually burn a Searing Blaze on. Are you fucking kidding me with this? No! Why are you doing this to me, Deck? Come on. Uh Okay. Well, so here's the thing. Um, if they have Searing Blaze now, it doesn't actually do anything. Because they didn't play a fetch land, so they'll have to use the mana on their turn at least. So, okay, well, we're going to three, and then we're just hoping that they can't deal with Spaloon. Okay. Which means now we're probably in a scenario where we are never casting this uh, Dismember, but such is life. All right, they might searing blaze us now. Yeah, okay. I'm guessing they're just holding like four bolts. Alright, Svalun number one. Which means we might also just attack with Svalun and then just vile in another one for a few turns in a row just to, to cycle these out for other cards and still leave them up on defense. That can't be a good sign. 
Searing Blaze, they have to pay a 1 for it again, which they do. Okay, I mean, we're at 8, they have 4 cards. It's not a great spot to be in. So I, I can make Spaloon indestructible if need be. They're at 9. Like, they actually are not... They, they, they could be in danger, so... I guess if they have double Boros Charm, I could be in trouble. Alright, so this one goes up. Lightning Helix me. Okay. That was pretty good. I mean, we're probably dead here, but... Uh, we gotta try. Okay, so... I think I need to not attack with the Mutavolt on the off chance that I draw Hexcatcher, because if I attack with Mutavolt, I will not be able to play it. If I, or I won't be able to play Hexcatcher, and I might need to in order to live this turn. So, okay, we drew an island. That's not great. Alright, so we need our opponent to basically just have Dink in their hand. They have to use two more spells on us. They have three, so... There's one. Um, yep. So we're, they, they have to draw one more spell. They have three draws to find another one. So. Oh. Yeah, okay. So they, they, they were drawing two cards there, but they also had two cards in hand still. Uh, they can just crack these eyelets and just look for it, so. Yeah, that'll do it. Alright, you got us. We drew four Svaloons, so, like, there is no way that we're defeating them after that happened, but we still have very good chances to just win this match, so we're not giving up. Um, Dismember, no, get out of here. And I think one Harbinger comes out. It's not fantastic. Uh, well, we're on the play. It's uh, it, it Harbinger's just not really that great at, in this match. So I guess that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Yeah. I guess we could have gone spreading seas instead. Uh, this hand is probably not going to beat them, despite the fact that we have. Chalice here. Uh, this this is not much better, but I guess we're going to have to keep it. If we draw the land, we can play the Chalice. Otherwise, we're just hoping Vile keeps us alive. <clears throat> Luck is not on our side this time. They suspend Rift Bolt. That's actually fine. Drawing any land here means that we're in this match. Uh, oh, that's not great. Because now if they smash our, our vial, we're probably dead. So this also gives them an opportunity to unload their hand. Uh, okay, well they didn't play all their one drops yet, so... Again, if we have, there's one more turn here where if we draw the lands, we're not dead yet. Naturally, okay. I'm probably just throwing a master in front of this Eidolon. Hmm. 
I mean, they might have Searing Blaze. Which they do, but they're going to take damage from it. Searing Blood, yeah, so it's going to hurt them at least, too. Skewer, yeah, it's not great. I'm just hoping they're sitting on a bunch of bolts. Come on. All right. All right. So I guess this turn I'm going to have to use the trickster on this thing. All right, so yeah, that's tapped. Helix. Yeah, I'm supposed to force this. They just have another one. Okay, well, they have one card left, so... Um, nope. Means if I play this vial, I'm going to seven, and then when I play this chalice, I'm going. I don't. I don't think I can actually play this vial here. It's going to cost me two life that I don't really have to pay at the moment. I just have to hope that Master can block this thing. I forced them to use a bunch of their creature removal, so... They might be sitting on, like, Boros Charm. Uh, yeah, they are letting me block, so there we go. And I guess this turn now we can, like, tick it up. But I, I, this chalice is, like, really not doing anything now. All we're doing is just stopping cards off the top of the deck. Alright, this has to go upstairs. I don't have a choice at this point. Okay. Um. Yeah, I go to seven, but it means they can't, like, bolt me off the top, so. And it means Faelune is going to be a little bit more protected. Well, they're digging, which means they probably don't have a whole lot. I mean, now if they top deck creatures, it's not really helpful to them. They could find, like, more uh, helixes or something, though, so there is that to be concerned about. But we have to just try to stem the bleeding. Right, Searing Blaze is also possible. Yep. Well, we're dead to Boros Charm at this point. Well, they can't play a creature and attack us, so I may as well attack them. I don't have a blue card for this fort. They're just going to crack it right away. Okay, hopefully they find either more lands or more ones. It's like 50% of their deck is a miss right now. Um, okay. I guess I'm just passing here. I 
probably drew nothing. That's pretty good. Okay. Um, I can play that on the end step. They're going to skewer me. Okay, well... I have to force this, I think. Otherwise, them finding, like, another skewer is lethal. Here, if I find a land, yeah, like, now I can play Hex Catcher, attack with Mutavolt. And try to race them before they find a uh, Boros Charm, I guess. It's long odds. All right, there's Islet. They're gonna Searing Blaze. Um, I have to make them at least pay the extra one mana for it, so. Alright, well. This is really bad. It's not bad. I mean, I guess the card, like, yeah, it's a creature I can play, so. Yeah, again, if they just continue to draw nothing, then I have hope. Uh, it is possible they could find, like, another Searing Blaze, but let's see here. They've already used two Searing Blazes and one Searing Blood, so while another draw... Like, if I play this, it gives them a target to hit, but they can always do this against Mutavolt if they ever find it anyway, so... Increasing the clock is worth a lot more. They find it, they find it. They found it. Alright, good games. Alright, we got really unlucky, I think, against that. That's like that that was a, a a good match, but like we drew fucking four Spaloons, and like our our hands against them were not terribly impressive, so Yeah, it it's a little bit awkward because we got stuck with like a, a seven where it's like vile and chalice and like nothing and then you know mulligan into like one land vile where we can't do stuff it's very hard going to five it's like really bad too so all right three one let's see if we can make this four one um we're on the play i'm gonna keep this this is fine it means if we're up against a ragavan deck then we have tricksters to stop them deploy them at flash speed if this is like Merc Tide, like these tricksters become extremely valuable. I'm all to six, okay. Also the same thing, if this is like hammer time, like I'm hope hoping these tricksters are gonna be good. <clears throat> we just we have cards that we can play here, so this is, this might be another burn deck. Okay. Well that means like trickster is actually pretty valuable against this deck too. We're up against Burn with a significantly better hand than we had before. Okay, so we're just going to trickster this thing. Because now, if they have sorcery, like, speed, spell, like, Lava Spike, they have to cast it pre-combat. So we know they probably don't have Lava Spike. Now, if they want to burn my trickster, they don't get the prowess effect from it, so... They might, they, yeah, they, they might have Searing Blaze. That's, that's always a possibility, but. Uh, play the island, I guess, and we're doing the same thing here. We're just going to trickster it down. We're going to stem the bleeding from this until the point where it doesn't matter. All right. They're just playing a bunch of creatures. Maybe they're thinking about Lava Spike.
damage. I think they're going to attack anyway, because the odds are that they have at least one burn spell that would blow up uh, Trickster, so... Skewer? Okay. Uh, they burned it on the Trickster anyway, so... See if this helps. And I guess I'm just going to trickster it down again. This means they probably have Lightning Helix. Lightning Bolt, okay. They only have one card left. Which means I'm not going to block this. This is just going to kill the thing. I don't know why they shocked, though. Like, what do they have? Like, Rift Bolt, maybe? No. Oh. Lightning Helix. Okay. Which they are going to kill the Trickster anyway, which means they have no more cards in hand. Which is interesting. So I think now it's time to go on our counter offensive. They have no more cards, so they're just drawing off the top here. A goblin guide? Sure. That means that's the only thing that can attack. I have hex catcher on top. That's fine. They're going to target the Hex Catcher. Uh, it doesn't really matter to make them pay more for this. Anything they attack with, like, they're going to lose a creature if they attack, so. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, well, that's fantastic. They're at 14, so. Uh, let me think about this. So right now, 3-3-4 three, three, and four can play Tide Shaper on one of their lands. Like, it doesn't really make a difference. Um, but then I have at least two blockers, so they could draw, like, Boros Charm and put me to six, but I still block two things. Like, I think that this is winning. Yeah, it means no matter what they uh, what they cast here, I can definitely block and kill creatures with these, so. Yeah, alright, we win. Got game one. There we go. That's how burn is supposed to go. Okay, um, we're on the draw here. Yeah, Harbinger's not, like, incredibly great against this deck. Dismember is even less great. 
The other option is like spreading seas. Like sometimes you can try this on the play and it's okay. Uh, but I think on the draw here, spreading seas in the draw is not very impressive. Harbinger is still not great, but maybe we'll try it here. So we could try spreading seas in the play if you want. Uh, it's not stupid, but I don't have a whole lot of faith in that plan. I just want to, uh, basically, the, the goal with burn is to do exactly what we just did. Um, we want, we have more creatures in, in our deck than they do, so we want them to exhaust all their removal, trying to clear a path for their creatures, but then they'll run out of cards, and we should still have more creatures than they do at that point. And, and then once, once we get there, like, the lords mean our creatures are going to be bigger than theirs, even... You know, once they're drawing off the top, they're they're kind of screwed. They're in a position where very difficult to push their damage in the ground because our yeah they're they're going to be losing creatures every time they attack. So we just want to kind of you know exa run them out of cards like that. And okay, this hand's actually really good. We have hex catcher. We have some lands so we can maybe tide shape or something. They're on they're mulliganing. So I'm definitely keeping this. Hex catcher might be able to counter some stuff. Right. Sunbaked. Oh, that's not a land they really want to play here. They, That is probably the worst start that their deck has. They lose a life to play uh, Rift Bolt right away. Especially if their plan is like to go into Eidolon, then yeah, this is going to be real bad for them. They just suspended two more Rift Bolts. Okay. That's it? Like, they they have two cards left. Um, so we're at 11. I think I'm supposed to just cast a Lord here. Uh, actually, I don't even know if that's true. Um, maybe I just ca like. It's hard to say because I don't want to. If they find a land, then that means the hex catcher's not really doing anything about searing blaze. And I guess if they if they don't have a land, then they can't really searing blaze me anyway. So maybe playing lord here is fine. I might just put in Tide Shaper just as a 1-1. One, one. It'll get pumped up by the Lord. That's fine. Just more bodies on the board. I might even chump block it like a Swift Spear or something with it. Depends. Eh, we'll see how this goes. You know, this is Searing Blaze. Yeah, see, they had the land anyway, so... I only have one card left, so... All right, now bodies on the board is where we want to be for a hex catcher, so we need to play this as a 1-1. One, one. Yeah, their lands are going to hurt them a lot here, so... That's pretty good. If they tried to bolt Lord here, then I think I would uh, use Hexcatcher to counter it with. But uh, at the moment, I want to keep the Trickster or the Harbinger here just in case they try to play a creature. Yeah, because here, look, I can just wait for them to attack me. They're not going to. But look, now, like, we're in such a ridiculously winning position. And we're just going to crush them. Uh, Chalice is exactly what we wanted to see here. Uh, 
You're going to bolt my Lord of Atlantis. You have no cards in hand. I'm just going to bounce this thing. This is actually okay with me. So effectively, you lost a card in that exchange. We are so winning this game right now. There's like nothing they can draw here that's going to matter. Helix? Okay, sure. I guess if they follow it up with like... Oh fuck, I don't even know what they can like have at this point that's going to matter because we have the hex catcher, so like this is all losing for them. I mean, this is going to kill them anyway. It doesn't make make a difference. Yeah, that's yeah, this is actually 11 damage here. So we we just crushed it. All right. There we go. Well, look. We just bossed that league. We went 4-1. We lost to one burn match where we had some pretty terrible draws, I would say, but other than that, like uh yeah, we beat Scam again, which is always hard. Um beat Tron, Living End, Burn. It's, yeah, it was pretty good. So I don't really have much to say about this deck. I said everything last time. I think this deck is pretty close to perfect, uh, at least for me. Like, I don't really want to make a whole lot of changes to it. I like this shell here. At least for the time being, like, this seems like it's doing what we need it to do. Um, Harbinger actually, you know, looked a little bit better against the burn deck when we can combo it with Chalice, because that's a way for us to remove their creatures without uh, having to spend four life on it, so... Chalice again looking pretty strong here against Burn and Living End. Uh, we, we did bring in Mana Leak against, you know, I think we brought in Mana Leak against like every one of these matches, so it's got to say something about how good Mana Leak is. Uh, yeah, may, I don't know. I, it's possible maybe like a third Mana Leak over the fourth Force of Negation. That's a thing. You could try. I don't know if I want to. Or like maybe over a Subtlety, but. Subtlety is a lot more specific about what matches we want to end, because it deals with stuff like um, Primeval Titan, where Mana Leak is not always guaranteed to do that job. Same thing like Subtlety against Tron. Like, Mana Leak is also fine there, but Subtlety is usually going to be better than Mana Leak for that deck, so... I don't know, but there's a, there's a lot of other decks, like against Scam, like... Man, maybe two copies is the correct number, but I have been enjoying playing this card. It does feel like it's it's fine. So, I don't know, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, I don't really have a lot more to say about it, because, uh, oh, here, so everybody can see the deck list we were working with. So, 4-1 is a really good result to come off of, especially after we just went um, 5-0 with it last time, so. Uh, yeah, all right, that's that's all I've got for now. I don't know if anybody, what's going on here, so. it Yeah, it's. It's going to be another couple interesting weeks for me, so I don't, I can't promise my schedule is going to be very consistent, but I'm going to do my best, so. Um, other than that, I don't know what's, oh, these, here, yeah, we'll go join Yellow What, they're playing the Modern Super Qualifier, which is going on now, so. Alright, cool. Alright, that's all I've got for today, so if you're watching the replay, do me a favor. Thumbs up the video. It makes me feel pretty good to see that. It encourages me to keep doing more content. Um, I am all about entertaining you guys. So, you know, if, if you're not being entertained, then I need to know. So please leave comments. Or if you are, then I also need to know that too. So I know that I get positive feedback in addition to negative feedback. That's really uh, important, I think. You know, positive feedback is something that sometimes is um, not as representative as negative feedback because you think like if you go to a restaurant and you just have like you know a fine experience like you know you might have a good time but it, you don't feel the need necessarily to go and leave positive reviews on it all the time but if you have a bad time then you know when you're when your um, experience is very extreme that's when you feel motivated to it so you know 
just yeah there, there, it's a there's a selection bias of of some type so you know i i read through everything and i try to respond to everything it means uh a lot to see that you go and leave these comments so the least i can do is at least you know acknowledge that they're there so all right we're gonna uh end for today so everybody thank you for being here with me i will see you again next time like i said i don't know exactly when it's going to be it might be sunday again but i don't know well oh it's just gonna depend upon how my work schedule is going to be and like how tired and stressed i'm going to be so until then i'll see you again later take it easy everybody